When the Blood Center was created in about 1979, it was created with two purposes in mind. One was to supply blood products and related services, mainly at Stanford. The other was to support research in immunohematology and also support the teaching and training functions of the university. Stanford Blood Center is different from other blood centers in that it's actually situated in an academic medical school. The physician group that we have is combined with the physician group at Stanford and Packard Hospital. So we are constantly trying to understand the patients and see what we can do to better support those needs. The patient who needs a blood product has a physical need that if it isn't addressed promptly can cause them to go either into a crisis or die. The need for well-characterized blood, both its red blood cell type, white blood cell type, what viruses it does not have, is absolutely key in real time. When blood comes into our laboratory, the blood bag goes to the components manufacturing laboratory. We use an automated component separating device that controls what goes into each bag. So the red cells are put in one bag, the plasma goes into another bag. We make a third component, which is a white cell concentrate that we provide to researchers that are trying to understand more about how blood works. When the blood center started, there was only basically two tests done on the blood in terms of safety. But today, if you look back, we're doing more than 20 tests just for safety. We test blood for a variety of infectious diseases. Every single platelet donor is typed for their histocompatibility antigens because we have access to that typing here at the blood center. That's in addition to the ABO and RH typing that I think most donors think may be the only test that we do. The blood center does not only what every blood bank does, which is to provide blood products, but in addition, the unique aspect of the blood center is that we try to make it better. Stanford Blood Center has become known for certain milestones. Cytomegalovirus was first identified at Stanford as important for transfusion support. We're still one of very few, maybe the only, blood bank in the country that does CMV testing on every single donor every time they donate. Dr. Engelman was one of the first people to acknowledge that the acquired immune deficiency syndrome was transmissible by transfusion. We knew that a certain type of white blood cell was diminished in people who had AIDS. So we were able to develop a test that would actually count the number of these cells and we developed that as a screen and we were the only ones that did it for a couple of years. There have been additional advances done over the years. The histocompatibility lab at Stanford was one of the places that the whole transplantation antigen system was identified. That was a very good example of the collaboration between blood center and research and ultimately patient care. Our blood center was not created to just follow the rules that other people set up because we clearly felt at the time the blood center was founded that the rules were not adequate. It's really part of the reason why I think the blood center here has, has performed so exceptionally well. I try to push our trainees to not just accept the status quo or accept how textbooks tell you to do things but to always ask questions. For me it's a passion. You keep pushing because you want to know, but you want to know because you see the problems that are out there and you say, how can we make it easier for them? I believe it's unique. If we didn't have this commitment to research and trying to make things better, then I, I'm sure that it wouldn't be like this at all. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.